caption, I go to references, and then over here where it says insert caption, I'm going to add a picture like a figure or, you know, whatever I want to do. So I go ahead and we insert the uh, caption. Now, right now it says, well, what is the label for this? In this case, it's going to say this is a figure. Now I can change this to a table. Maybe I have a table and I can do a content of a table of contents for the tables <laughs> and the figures and even equations. I can do that, but we'll stick with figure. And you can choose on, well, do you want this below the selected item? Or do you want to create an even new label other than a figure, a caption, or anything else? You can do that. In this case, it's going to say the caption is going to be figure one. I can exclude the label from the caption, which means if I select this, it'll then just say one, and then that way it'll just be number one and that's it. Um, or you can say, well, no, that's fine, figure one, we'll put that there. And so we're going to go ahead and put this as a caption, figure one. Now I can go ahead and insert the thing, and we can say this is Antonio Stradivari. So we can do that. I think I spelled his name correctly. And then we can go ahead and click OK. Now the numbering, if I click on numbering, that just says what type of format do you want. Do you want it 1, 2, and 3, or do you want it ABC, Roman numerals? How do you want to do that? And you can even include the chapter number. If you're doing chapters, it'll say, well, the heading for this is a heading 1 type. Then you use a hyphen, and then it'll put the figure 2. So it'll say the name of the chapter plus the figure. I don't necessarily need to do that, so I'll click OK. We click OK, and boom, there it is. Figure 1, Antonio Stradivari. So that's Figure 1. I come down to here. We click on this picture. We want to insert another caption. Notice it says this is, oh, it must be Figure 2 because I'm looking at your document here in Word 2007, and I know you already have a Figure 1. So that's kind of fun that we can do that. So Figure 2, we're going to say these are sack butts. By the way, that's the name. Uh, I know it's interesting. Back in the old English, they had such uh, you know interesting names. So this is a soprano, alto, uh, tenor, and a bass sack butt. Those are the things that we have. Uh, stay with the figure. We say OK. I click OK, and now I've got these figures that are in place. Here's figure two. Here's figure one. So now when I come back and scroll all the way back up to the top here, and let's say I want to input um, up here a uh, table of figures. So I can put table of figures. And we go here, home. Click on here. And we say that the table of figures is going to be next. It's going to be inputted right after this. I then come over here to references. And now you'll notice, where's the table of figures. It's not on table of contents. You'd think so. There's no little thing. It's not a footnote. It's not a citation. Believe it or not, remember, we're dealing with captions, right? It's right here. Table of figures dialog. Now, it's kind of hidden, so aren't you glad you took this CBT nugget? So we click on it, and app, look at that. Now, it's interesting that it used to be, in the older versions of Office, all th all of these were available, and then you could just select in between them, but you would do insert indexes and tables, and so they would do that. Now it's going to say, how do you want to do your table of figures? I think we all understand, fairly simple, just like we saw with the table of contents. Here's the print pre preview. Do you want to show the page numbers? Turn them off. You can do that. Right align them. No. You can do that. Do you want tab leaders? You can change the tab leaders to anything that you want. The formats, the caption label is a figure, which we've done that. Remember, we just saw that. We can change these even here if we want. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say, if I remember right, I think we did distinctive. So we'll follow that format. Distinctive caption labels. Woohoo! We're all good. The options are the same. Do you want to build the tables from the balloon text or the styles? How do you want to do it? Table identifiers. These are all things that you can change from this. F meaning the figure for the table entry fields if you want to do that. Okay, So we click OK. Those are the options. We click OK, and boom, there it is. Figure 1, Figure 2, it puts the text. It adds the name right here for the table of figures. And just like I could with my table of contents, if I hover my mouse over here, hit the control, and click I'm instantly taken to figure one, Antonio Stradivari. So a table of figures, just like the table of contents, allows us to navigate quickly if we're in an online electronic format, or if you're in a printed format, if you scroll back up here, it tells you that this is on uh, page five, right? Page five of 10, if I scroll up here to my tables, 
table of figures. Sure enough, there we go. We are on uh, page five. So th that's what these table of contents and the table of figures do for us. Now, table of contents and table of figures are big idea type of things. Like this is obviously a, maybe a chapter heading, and this is subchapter. But what if you want to find particular pieces of information that are located within this huge document and you know you don't want to have to read through it i mean i think i know where certain things are in the middle ages and you you go there that's what an index is all about specific concepts terms that you might not be able to find just looking at a table of contents so what we usually do is we put the index at the end of the document right you'll go and you'll scroll all the way down here to the back and the at the end of the document you'll find the index now in order for you to do this Word will help you out, but what you have to do is you have to tell Word 2007 what words, phrases, whatever it is that you highlight and you identify and tag with these index entry fields, you will then, Word will basically, once you've done that, Word will then go and build an alphabetical list at the end along with the page numbers or page number ranges that they are included in it. Pretty cool, isn't it? So let's show you how this all works by, let's go up into our document here and we'll, we'll find a good place here. We'll go into the Roman the Catholic Church area here and their, quote, influence on the history of instruments. So let's say that we want to find um, anything that has to do with the word nullum. And this is perhaps, a, a, you know, in this case, obviously, I use the lorem ipsum generator, the Latin generator, so this text doesn't mean a lot. But what I can do is I can select and highlight a word or a phrase, and then what I can do up here is mark an entry. Notice that. Now, notice it also, if I click on it, it allows it, and it'll automatically say, oh, you've selected nullum. So the main entry is nullum. Now, check this out. I can also, if you notice when you scroll over it, it tells you a little secret shortcut, Alt-Shift-X. So I'm going to hit Alt-Shift-X and boom, there it is, mark index entry. Now a main entry is going to be something like a, a overall thing. So if I said like uh, the main entry would be something like on a, a craftsman, well then underneath craftsman might be brass craftsman woodwind craftsmen you know and you can break them down as sub entries and then they those will appear underneath the main entry that's what a sub entry would allow you to do now once you've gone ahead and said well this is going to be the index the main entry is going to be under the word nullum and then we're going to say well the options can be this we can do a cross reference which we'll see in just a minute you can put down the current page that you're on. You can also do a page range. Now page range is really good. Let's say that you're going to find that in one section nullum is mentioned 20 times in two pages. Well obviously you don't want that to be just you know you know those two pages or maybe over 20 pages nullum in a row is going to be mentioned. Well then you're not going to want to put every, you know pages you know 10 11 12 13 14 all the way up to page 20 you can do a page range where it'll say page 10 through 20 is where you're going to find all of that talking about nullum and whatever that is now you can of course change the page number format you can say well I like the page number to be bold I can even make it italic this deals with your index and how it shows up later on by the way you can change this once you create that index uh, you know you can make some changes to that so we'll say page number format we'll go with bold now here's where it gets really cool down here I can go ahead and mark this one single word but let's say I want every single place in this document where the word nullum is used so that way people can find it now in this case uh, null, um, the lorem ipsum generator obviously repeats it a few times so I'm gonna go ahead and click mark all so that way I'm gonna choose all of the things that say nullum and watch what happens. So I go ahead and click Mark All. Instantaneously, it turns on the Show Hide feature. And look at this next to the word Nullum. I'll move this over a little bit so you can see this. It's inserted this reference tag, this index entry. So this can be, and by the way, this can be for a word or a phrase or anything. And it tags it. And it says, this has been selected. Nullum is going to be an index entry and XE index entry and the page number will show up as bold. See the little slash B here? Now of course if I come over here and go to the home and I turn off the markings, that's hidden text. 
that doesn't show up. It won't be printed, and you won't see it unless, of course, you turn on the uh, show hide uh, markings and for your format markings so that we can see that. Now, the neat thing is, is, remember I said Nullum is probably in here a couple of times. So if I continue to scroll down, look at this. Here it is right on the same page. Here's another Nullum. And I keep scrolling down, and I'm going to find whenever it repeats itself, you are going to find that it's going to add uh, that particular uh, thing. Here's another one, Nullum, right there. So it's obviously in several pages uh, throughout this one. Okay, so we've marked one of them. That's our entry. Notice the Mark Index Entry dialog box stays up. So that way you don't have to keep going back over here to References and click Mark Entry, Mark Entry, Mark Entry every single time. So what's some of the other things that we want to mark? Okay, well, let's just pick a, uh, a few other things. So we've got the Nullum right there. And let's say we want to say anytime, let's let's show a phrase. So first off, I'm going to turn off the show hide here uh, so I can grab something and not have to worry about what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, this sounds cool. Um, anytime it says uh, Myasinus uh, Cursus, okay? So I select that. Now, when I click over here, watch what happens. It says, okay, you want that entire, uh, you know, thing as part of that. Okay, sounds good. Current page, bold. And we'll go ahead and uh, just mark... Uh, yeah, we'll mark all on that one, too. Sounds good. Now I can come in, and it's going to go down and find all the places that that's set up. And let's see, lorem ipsum is used a lot. Now let's say we choose lorem ipsum. And again, I just turned that off, so that way I can uh, you know, see, see the things that I want to get without... Uh, you know, picking up any unnecessary text. I mean, if you do have it on, I mean, that's fine, and, you know, that'll work for you, but, uh, you know, you just have to kind of be careful. Now, lorem ipsum has now disappeared over here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab lorem ipsum and click here. All right, sounds good. We're going to mark, um, mark all of these, and then watch this. I'm going to come over here and hide this. I want to make now the uh, aliquim a subentry. So now, aliquim, I can come over here and I click over here. I can actually say the main entry is lorem ipsum, and the sub entry is now aliquim. And I'm going to use the current page. So we'll go ahead and uh, mark this particular one, and so it's set up. Now watch this. Remember how I said I marked it? It says lorem ipsum, and then it puts a, a little. Uh, colon there, and then aliquim, and then bolds and numbers. So this entry has now changed to reflect that. Okay, so now we've we've done all our indexes, we've, we've done some markings, right? So I'm going to go ahead and close this, turn off this, and now we're going to go down to the end of my particular pages, now all the way down here to page 10, hit enter a couple of times, and now what I want to do is create this index. So we go up here to References, now we're not working with captions, we're working with the index, mark entry, here it is, create the insert or insert an index. So I go ahead and click on it and it's going to ask me something. Okay, how do you want it to show up? Do you want to right align the page numbers, kind of like what we did before? We can turn that on and put the he header and this is the same. You can also say, well, do you want it indented? Do you want it run in? How many columns do you want? columns you can do two or you can do three we'll go ahead and stick with two and you're gonna see both of them you can also turn on the mark entry and go back and make some other you can have it auto do auto mark which is kinda of fun and even modify so if you click on the modification you can say well what's the style do you want index one with you know with the preview you can use uh, you know Times New Roman it tells you all the different ways that you can you know use that you can even modify this by selecting the index and the style for index one what font you're using so you have a lot of flexibility remember I told you you can change that if you didn't like the bold and if you didn't like this you can you can do all kinds of really neat things okay um, so this is a little bit beyond the scope of this nugget but I just want to show you where you can go to make changes for that so we'll go ahead and cancel out of that We'll go ahead and we say we want our index. I click OK, and boom, there it is. So now we can see lorem ipsum on which pages it is. We can then see uh, what a main entry lorem ipsum is. And then underneath, we could then outline a list of all the different things, aliquim and sednon and the class aptent and anything like that. Notice it's also in alphabetical order down the columns, L, M, N. Now, you might think, Chris, did you plan that, that it was right in alphabet? No, I didn't actually, just randomly, right there. Notice uh, we only selected the one 
for uh, uh, Mycenaeus.